We all know you can't change the weather, more's the pity here in rainy Paris, but you can at least forecast it, although obviously today I didn't. And it turns out that our forecasts are getting ever more precise. Enter AI prediction tools like Huawei Cloud's Pangu weather model. It turns out it's more accurate, more precise, and quicker than traditional models. Quick plug, you can access Pangu's weather forecasts for free on the website of the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasts. So I asked the Centre's Deputy Director General, Professor Dr. Florian Pappenberger, what impact machine learning models such as Pangu were having on forecasting. There's suddenly an improvement in skill which we haven't seen for a very long time. So they're, they're sort of revolutionised revolutionized the business of weather forecasting itself. And, and what difference do you think then that itself brings, if it improves weather forecasting, what's the knock-on impact of that? Plant your harvest or plant your crop, you may decide you're going to do it today because tomorrow there's too much rain, you're going to base it on the weather forecast. If you, if you walk out in the traffic, um, you may have snow plows there because they had a weather forecast to be ready for the weather forecast. So weather forecast impacts really every single aspect of our lives um, in such and therefore better weather forecast will automatically improve that type of activity. I think you said in a, a talk I was watching earlier, you said it, it feeds us, it, it refreshes us emotionally and physically, um, but it also kills us um, in terms of natural disasters, etc. So presumably machine learning and these models, Pangu, will actually help genuinely save lives as well. Definitely, and when you look very carefully, there's currently the early warning for all initiative by the United Nations um, announced. If you want to produce early warnings for all, you will need forecasts everywhere. You need better forecasts everywhere. You need forecasts which you can easily run and execute absolutely everywhere. Machine learning have the real advantage. They're actually quite cheap to run compared to conventional weather forecasts, which are really expensive. You need supercomputers, you need loads of scientists. Machine learning model nowadays, the forecasts you can run on a fairly simplified infrastructure. So you can produce this absolutely everywhere. So you will have warnings everywhere which means you can save lives everywhere or can save economic impact everywhere because you have it absolutely in every corner of your territory. And is it as simple, just explain what it is that is changing. It's not as expensive, it's more accessible. Is it simply about more qualitative data and being able to analyse that in a more qualitative way? I think it's a bit more than that than just qualitative data and analysing in a more qualitative way. Um, Weather forecasting or producing weather forecasts is a very complex process and such. And machine learning sort of approximates that physically based model. So it makes that better in that sense. So it's not just better analysis, it's also just simply better forecasts by sort of analyzing better what actually happens by churning these, these thousands of terabytes and petabytes of data and trying to improve the model as such. I'm British, I'm obsessed with the weather. Most people are obsessed with the weather. Can I look forward to a day where we get 100% accuracy of the weather, thanks to AI and, and modern technology? You will never <laughs> have 100% accuracy of the weather. That's simply impossible. Our, our atmosphere is chaotic. Our, our Earth system is chaotic. There's these famous studies where you say if there's a butterfly changing the wings in, in South America, you're going to have a different weather in Europe or you have a hurricane in Europe. So the atmosphere and the physics are chaotic behavior in nature. You can't approximate this to 100%. You will never be able to do that. So therefore, forecasts will always be uncertain, no matter what technology you use. I can't tell whether that delights you or dismays you, actually, the fact <laughs> it's chaotic and it can't be achieved. I find it super exciting because, of course, there's lots of subtleties in that. If I say forecasts are always uncertain, I can tell you tomorrow the weather will be between 1 degree and 20 degree, or I can tell you tomorrow it will be between 9.5 and, and 10.1 degree still an uncertain forecast, but far more accurate, far more better for you to act on. The 1 to 20, what are you going to do? Have a barbecue or not? No clue. When I give you a very short range, you can actually make decisions based on that. Um, so despite me saying it's always be uncertain, it doesn't mean the uncertainty has to be the same quantity. And yes, it delights me because I find it exciting. <laughs> so it's more precise probabilities. More precise probabilities further ahead in advance. And and. What are the challenges and opportunities offered by technological advances just more generally 
are there other areas where you look at and you think this could also transform what forecasting is able to do in what clearly, as you say, is a critical field for so many people? If you sort of think what, why we're doing what we're doing, it is really to sort of produce the best or produce, trying to produce the best weather forecast in the world. That's our mission. That's what we are living for. That's what I breathe for and that's what I like to do. Um, to do that, I need open science, I need open data, I need, I need exchange of ideas, I need, I need an entire community pulling together and sort of freely trying to advance that field. So what, what I want to have is a really open atmosphere, an open discussion forum where we can really advance those together um, in that sense. And I think that's where particular big companies or small companies or whatever else can really make a difference. And finally, when it comes to forecasting, what keeps you awake at night? What's the sort of panic at the back of your mind? Or maybe at the forefront of your mind? I the don't forefront know. Of my <laughs> so one of the key things what we do is we produce a weather forecast every day and it has to be reliable. So it has to come out of the door at the same time as a high quality. So for me as a weather forecast producer who's trying to support member states or national net services, that is the most important thing for me. It has to be on time and a high quality. If there's a tropical cyclone, I would like to predict that tropical cyclone exactly the time where my member states, my forecasters, where the people who make the decisions and look at them can use that. And that's the most important thing for me, and that probably keeps me awake most. So the nightmare really is missing the deadline or just missing getting it. Missing the deadline and having a not high quality forecast. Very good. <laughs>